Welcome back to another episode of Primetime. I've got Nick beside me, Dad off the bench. This is the first week of Primetime without any footy, no NRL, no AFL. Look, last week was the first week. This is the first... Primetime. Se second week. Yeah, no, we did Primetime last week, post-GF. Just no That's footy it topics. It was all GF related. It was, yeah. it was a reaction to the grand finals. But this week, there wasn't much on apart from... Rugby league players getting in a boxing ring on stand. Rugby league boxing up in Townsville, was it? Yeah, ba Battle of the Reef. Ba Battle ba of the Reef. Big Bash of the Reef. There was what? Junior Paulo, Tavita Pangai Jr. Yeah, Paulo Ta Akusa, Sweet Pea. Tamalolo, Regan, Regan Campbell Gillard, big upset there. I didn't expect, I didn't expect that. Solomona. Nelson went up against Jared Wallace. Big, big, big props for Ben Jared Hannett, Wallace. former player. You know, it was disappointing. Matt Cooper. Why is that? Seeing Matt Cooper. Now, look, I'm not homosexual, but. When you think of Matt Cooper, you're expecting someone ripped, former sexiest man in rugby league. I'm hearing he's going to be on a boxing card. I want to tune in, see what he's looking like. You're going to get to see him with his shirt off, nice and sweaty in the boxing ring. He's got the love handles on him. He's not the Matt Cooper of old. I'm after the Matt Cooper that held up Justin Hodges in, in the state of origin and used brute strength. And he lost. It was one of those tough to see. It was so disappointing to see because he had a fat chest, he had a fat stomach. And I don't want to kick someone while they're down no, no, after, no, the after the loss. But it's just you're expecting to see a fit Matt Cooper. And then what you got to see was someone that was a bit pudgy. And it's just like, mate, that's my childhood gone. No, it's not childhood gone. I just know Matt can be better than that. We've seen him on reality TV shows. You know, he's an MMA fighter, isn't he? No, he's a mixed martial arts. Yeah, 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 no, you are, you are. Yeah, yeah, so... Age gets everyone. It does. And well, that's just kind of the dad bod. Maybe he thinks that that's in right now. The dad bod is, you know, that's attractive. He's been good on it. He had a good showing. But it wasn't the best show out of boxing. Tavita Panga Jr. got the win in the end by unanimous decision. He's taken this bad boy persona on pretty, pretty full on. He's gone on Triple M. He's getting stuck into Wayne Bennett. He's getting stuck into his former coaches. Says all these players in his past teammates haven't reached out to him and see how he's going and well, wishing he's him luck. He's only got two friends from the Bulldogs. He goes, still, I can yeah. count them on both hands, how many friends I still have from rugby league. A lot of people in the comments are saying that's a credit to you as a bloke. You know, maybe they don't. They don't like you. Or you were poor, you were poor in the in the locker room. But did he say I can, I can count them on both hands? That's a yeah. lot. That's like, no, no. I think he said I, I think he meant two. he meant to say I can maybe count, count them on, on one, one hand. hand. Regardless, yeah. he took a big dump on, on everybody. The Bulldogs, yeah. I'm, yeah, on the Bulldogs I'm, especially. If no one wants to get around to Vita Pangai Jr., I'm going to get around him because he's playing this bad guy persona for so long. It was Anthony Mundine, okay, and Paul Gallen. People want to see him get knocked out a bit, but he's taken on the bad boy of boxing, the bad guy persona, the Scott Hall. The, the Nick Kyrgios, what did he say in his Instagram post? Some people want to be Roger Federer, some people want to be Rafael Nadal. I want to be Nick Kyrgios. He wants to be the bad boy of boxing. He's got the personality for it. If he can sell fights, I'm going to strap a rocket to him. I want to get behind him. Anyone that's had lunch at Data's house, you're a fan of mine. I'm yeah, a fan of yours. Exactly right. He's a, friend of, he's a friend of the show. But that brings us to the fan question of the week. Dad, what's the fan question of the week? Will you watch the A-League now that the footy season's over? No, no, I will not watch the A League. It's, it's, it's a hard no. It's not a slight against soccer or football as a sport. It's just mm. the A League. I don't have the time to watch it. I've been getting into my EPL, Champions League, dabbled in a bit of La Liga, mm. but the A League just doesn't do it for me. Yeah. I can't name five players that play in the A League, and I, I, don't, I like some Aussie athletes that play, but it's just I don't have the time. We've been getting into our Premier League. We're you know following Arsenal, staying up late for the games. We just saw an unbelievable game over the weekend against Man City. But look, I'm not going to say I dislike the A League. I dislike some of the fans that are online, those vocal fans. They even go for their own. They go for some of those, you know, I see Claude's and some of the born offside people copping heat online. But regardless, it's, I feel like it's a toxic fan base. If you support soccer or football, they even go at you just for calling it soccer. But if you support football overseas, how come you're not watching it domestically? Also, you know, we have some, some A-League players that follow us, you know, follow the comedy, whatever, follow the show. Respect them. Good on them. They're, but I think they have aspirations past the A-League, and the A-League isn't up to the standard of what overseas football is. And, and it shouldn't be. It's, a, it's the A-League, but it's just not entertaining at the moment. The A-League is just a lower quality football, and that's just what it is. And really, why would I substitute watching Rugby League to go then watch the A-League? It's, it's not. not it's, and, and, and no one's coming at me going, why aren't you watching the Saudi League? Why, why, you know what I mean? If, why are you watching Serie A? Well, because you're not from Saudi Arabia. Yeah, but, but, but I'm just saying it's, oh, I, don't, I don't watch lower levels of football. Yeah. I might tune in if Ronaldo's playing, don't yeah. get me wrong. Yeah. If Del Piero's back here playing for Sydney FC, don't get me wrong, I'll, I'll tune into a game. But, you know, I'd rather watch where the greats are right there, now. there was a time when the A-League used to have the marquee player and they were attracting some mm. of the, you know, guys that were sort of getting towards the end of their career. But that's not happening anymore. And like you said, just said, you know, the Saudis are now picking up all those players. So, uh, and, you know, and there's really, no hope for the A-League. I take it back. I will watch the A-League, maybe when it's a Sydney derby. I watch a Wanderers Sydney FC game. I might attend the game just for the atmosphere. But bar that game, I'm not watching. 
I got to agree with you. Okay, let's try a new segment. Now that we're in the off-season, okay, the rumour mill starts to heat up. Okay, things happen in the off-season, whether it's player scandals and trades over in the off-season. Things that we've been hearing, ear close to the ground, the rumour roundup, is I've been told that Jerome Luai has signed a $1 million a season deal with the West Tigers. Somewhat believable. That's well, very I, believable. I think, look, you've won three premierships. It's time to cash your chips in. Get your money now. You've, you've, you've won all your accolades. You've done it at the top of rugby league. If any club's going to give him a million dollars, it's the Tigers. People were kind of arguing, is he, is he a million dollar player? On the market right now, there's not many good halves. If Ezra Mann can command a lot of money, Jerome Luai can command a lot of money. If any club's going to give him a million dollars, it's the Tigers. So what I'm saying is I've heard that the West Tigers have pretty much given him $1 million a season. They can't obviously sign it till November 1st when he's allowed to talk to other clubs. But a pretty, a, I've heard it's pretty much a done deal. It's very believable because we spoke before the, uh, the grand final. Jerome Luai is going to be a player in demand because he's a three-time premiership winner now. And if you're the West Tigers, you have to pay overs for players. You're not going to be able to get Jerome Luai on 700000 a season. If you want a quality half, you have to pay overs. $1 million, that's just now the going rate for a good quality half of, you know, half of yeah. 5'8". West Tigers, I don't think Jerome Luai is going to transform your club. He might. He might bring a winning mentality. But as a rumour, I think, you know, we'll see November 1st if it actually happens. That's where, West Tigers, where careers go to die. I, I, <laughs> look, you know, you saw it with, I mean, Josh Reynolds. I know he's a good friend of yours, but he went there for big money. And, you know, Michael McGuire was trying to get rid of him after the, when he, when he took over well, who uh, Ivan signed Cleary. Him, Ivan Cleary. But it's not even Ivan Cleary okay, signed he, him. Here's an example. But, but mate, what they, about, they, like, Isaiah Papaliti went over there and then yeah. just kind of quietened off. They just, I don't they think go they have there. the structure to play. Coruscant is the only one that's kind of as an exception. He's still status. Killer. It's a career killer. If he goes there, but like you said, he's got to cash in while the, you know, while the iron's hot now. Like he's, he's won three premierships. There's nothing else to prove. He might, they might pick him up early. He might, leave, he might leave early. Who knows? Okay, what about this one? We continue the off-season rumour roundup. I've been reading online on Twitter, in the Twitter sphere, and on Facebook, Ezra Mann's made his commitment to the Brisbane Broncos. He says, I'm going to be here a very long time. And, you know, there's not many rumblings on how much it is for, but it's alleged it's going to be $1 million a season at the Brisbane Broncos. Ezra Mann did come out and said, I'm not leaving the Brisbane Broncos. Mm. I want to build a dynasty. He's, he's fully committed with his teammates to building the next generation of the Brisbane Broncos. But $1 million a season? I don't think he's worth a million dollars. He's not the best half in that team. Adam Reynolds is the, probably the big name half that deserves a lot more money. Ezra Mam had a great grand final and was their best player. But that, that grand final alone adds two, three hundred thousand dollars to his value. Just just that one game. Does he not take added three hundred thousand dollars to his player value? If I'm if I'm if I'm a coach and I had to choose between Jerome Luai and or Ezra, Ezra Mam, mate, I'd be going Ezra Mam every day. If you're telling me they're both a million dollars, there's no way Jerome Littlewise should be getting a, a million dollars. I say dollars. they're on the same level. No they're way, same, no like, way. They're both Ezra running Man, hard. Ezra, Jerome Ezra Man's a game more. breaker. Ezra Man's a game breaker. Okay, but Jerome, Jerome Littlewise is not a more. game. Mate, it, the, the grand final was a perfect uh, uh, example. He went off the field and they ended up winning the game. He's got a bad shoulder day. Bad luck. He went off the field. If he stayed Ezra on Man the field, 15 if he minutes stayed on the field they don't win that game. I heard that the reason why Jerome Littlewise is obviously going is Penrith obviously have salary cap constraints constraints if they gave D Dylan Edwards 900,000 apparently the offer for Jerome Law will be somewhere of the ballpark of 600,000 yeah, so if you can fair. get if you can get up 200,000 300,000 dollars more a million dollars a season right you're probably going to take it so the th same goes with Ezra Mam if if you're getting you know for 500,000 from the Brisbane Broncos right now and you get offers of you know, eight hundred to a million he's dollars. On, a he's on. He's on. He's on two fifty now, Ezra Man. That's what I mean. So you're gonna you're gonna take it. Are there many quality halves in the comp? And I'm just saying that grand final performance alone, even that twenty minutes, what he just did, guarantees him another two three hundred thousand dollars in salary. That's what it is. He's he's shown on the big stage he can perform, and and you know he'll be an Origin player. He'll yeah, it's, maybe. You he'll probably know. back end his contract. He probably won't get a million dollars in the first season, but he'll start getting sort that sort of money like once he's in his mid to late. Uh, okay, 20s. what about this one? The final rumour, the last rumour of the roundup. Bradman Best, Newcastle Knights centre, said to have put pen to paper with the West Tigers as well. West Tigers obviously on the market looking for players. I've been told Bradman Best has signed for around 850000 a season with the West Tigers. Well, right? I just saw a post come out that the Newcastle Knights reckon they'll re-sign him for 700000 So rumours are going everywhere. Has he put pen to paper? Has he not? It... Newcastle Knights, they need to keep him because they just lost Dom Young. Kalen Ponga needs some sort of other star power mm. in the back line. What do you... What do you well, I, 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 look, I know that uh, Roger Best, mm. Bradman's father, and Scott Fulton, they played together. They're very, very good friends. We were all together at Manly back in the mid-90s. <laughs> so I know there's a connection there. 
And I know that, that Scott was Trying to lure doing, him over? Yeah, was trying to lure him over. That would be a massive signing. That will be a massive signing. If they if they get Jerome Lawai and Bradman Best. Best. I think that hurts Newcastle way more than, you know, than it's a gain for the West Tigers. No, I with, think no, with Newcastle losing, like you said, Dom Young and Bradman Best, they really have no strike power out wide. Dom Young as a last tackle option. Bradman Best as your left side Dane, attacking Dane threat. Dane Gogo getting on in years. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that really just shuts them out. But of... again, knowing that the salary cap is going up, I understand that. But $850,000 for a centre? It's hard to He's justify. He's one of the best centres in the comp. It's very hard did to he justify. A, did he have a better year than Joey you, Manu Nicholas. this year? What's... I agree with you. He, that, did have a better, he, he had, had a better, better year than that's Joey Manu. That money. He, had a, he played better than Jesse Ramian. He played like... But eight, thinking, 800 plus is spine money. you got to be playing in a spine position to get 800 plus. No, he's he just needs to like, be a quality back. He's gonna be line. he's gonna be on more money than Api Coruscant in his own team. Who's more valuable to that team if they were playing together? Does he miss many games, Bradman Best? I'm not sure. But he's young in his career. You're not going to get injured. At I, I think age. it's worth it. You get that, the Tigers have to pay. Overs they just have to pay players. overs. Yeah. That's so that, that's what that's the conundrum. But that man, they're... that's like you know Bulldogs back in the day signed Watani to Lesniak and they had to play him on the wing. Unless you're playing it, but they could justify the money because they played him at fullback. Unless Bradman Best is transitioning to fullback, or how can you justify roller, play? Or strike second rower. I don't Nicholas know. Canterbury Bulldogs paid how much for Crichton? Eight, eight fifty, nine hundred. Yeah. But he's going to play fullback. No, he's not no, going to play fullback. Mate. Know, Seraldo, Seraldo said him and uh, Blake Tapp are uh, trialing. Regardless, for the, for the those are the spot, three yeah. rumours of the rumour roundup this week. Bradman Best to the Tigers, Jerome Luai to the Tigers, and Ezra Mann on a million dollars a season with the Broncos. Big rumours. We'll, we'll be bringing those each week, so make sure you stay tuned on our socials. But. I kind of like him. It'll spice up the competition next season. I guess we'll see. West Tigers making moves. Let's move over to the Wallabies, the Rugby World Cup. The Wallabies officially out. Now, everyone wrote them off a week ago, two weeks ago, right? They said, it's done. This is the lowest point in Australian rugby Fiji history. Fiji can't lose to Portugal. They're out. Fiji lose to Portugal. Portugal's first win in World Cup history. <laughs> no one, if you bet on this game, you'd, you'd cry yourself to sleep, which is this bloke. But... Everyone, for a glimpse there, there was a glimmer of like, oh, the Wallabies, can they still make... Well, I thought that they made it after, after the Fiji officially can they, lost. Can they progress past the pool stage? Well, they, they ended up finishing on the same amount of points. But Australia. because they lost head-to-head. Yeah, head. but because they lost head-to-head to, head to Fiji, um, Fiji went through. So now that they are game. officially out, what is the verdict? What is the report card of the Wallabies Rugby World Cup campaign? The report card for the Wallabies has to be an F. This is their worst finish in a World Cup ever. They've made quarterfinals, they've made finals... They've always progressed out of the group stage or the pool stage. This is the first time they've never made it out of their own pool. And as an Australian, we understand that Eddie Jones picked a younger team mm. and a team that you know we weren't expecting much and we're building for the future. But you still got to make it out of the group stage. And you can't not make it to a, a, a pool with Fiji, Wales, Georgia, and Portugal and not make it out. There's two wins easily that we should have had, and we didn't. You know, or three wins we should have gotten there. And we I'll didn't. preface by saying that we're not the biggest rugby fans, right? We don't really stay. We don't watch a lot of Super Rugby. You know, we we catch our international tests, whatever it be. But looking at the sentiment online from your Drew Mitchells, your, your former players, your Sonny Bill Williams, they're filthy with how the Wallabies played. They're filthy with the performance over the World Cup. They said they should have given a swan song finish to the likes of Quade Cooper and a lot of other experienced players um, in the Wallabies. They didn't get their you know, final World Cup campaigns. It's disappointing to see, but at the end of the day, the only way here for the Wallabies is up. They, can, rock o- bottom, they can only go up. They can only go up from here. A lot of people are going to keep the faith with Eddie Jones and say you're going you're gonna to have to go through some pain to get out of this rut. And I, I guess we'll see where we are. We got to see Marky Mark, Mark Nwangan Itawazo, who went to school with us, played uh, first 15 at St. Pat's. He had a good World Cup campaign, was one of the highlights, I think did his job for the Wallabies. There's some good storylines from the World Cup and for some young Aussie players. But ultimately, yes, a fail only weighs up from here. If they're going to improve, they have to sign rugby league players. And I know I'm saying that as a biased rugby league fan, mm. but throw $10 million at Nathan Cleary, sign Cameron Murray, sign Angus Crichton, just sign all these players that, that you can help boost your 2027 20, chances. Well, speaking of Angus Crichton, his management reached out to Rugby Australia and said, we're happy to, you know, he was going to sign with the Western Force. 800000 a season. He was ready to go, leave Bondi, go, go to the Western Force. Rugby Australia said they didn't like how the negotiations were going and pulled the deal. Western Force seemed to be a bit filthy at that. Is that a stupid move from the Wallabies? It's not stupid because Angus Crichton, I think, is a bit, you know, it's a 50-50 chance whether he's going to actually be a good player. He's a quality player. He's an origin He's an origin. He had a quiet player. season this year for the Roosters post-Netherlands or post-Amsterdam. Yeah, but I'm saying he is a quality player. He's a rugby junior. He's played the game. 
you, you know, he could be an inside outside center, easy walk onto the Wallabies. If he's in good form, then yes, it's a missed opportunity, especially with how much money they're throwing at players. How would you feel if you're the Roosters? And you know that one of your players is just seeking to leave to go to Rugby Union. Do you, they would have given him permission to go and negotiate. That's not like he's just blindly negotiating. They would have this, said, this, hey... This has been a write-off for him. Quite a, that was it. No, it Origin, wasn't too bad. Yeah, I mean, no, they, was they still it, went it? to the semi-finals. He, he missed the first, you know, one-third of the season. Yeah. You know, through... It's you know. very disappointing to see it happen. But for the Roosters, it is not nice having two of your players flirting with Rugby Australia. One of them already gone in Sawali. But if, if they're playing there next year, they can't leave immediately. So... Why do you really care? Yeah, it, it, it's contracts look, for the future. You know, for me, Eddie Jones, I, look, I'm going to back him. It's a long-term plan. I'm just, I, I, I support what he's doing. I think blood these guys in this year, uh, win the World Cup, I think it's in Australia. No. Is it, no? no. Is it, Actually, it? no, it is, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's, it's like in Australia, New, Zealand New Zealand and Australia. Yeah, yeah mate, the, the team will be ready by then. And, you know, everybody that's bagging him now, Alan Jones coming out, he loves, he loves kicking, kicking people, people while, they're down. while they're down. He's the mm. best at that. But, you know, like at the end of the day, man, I, I reckon he's going to do a great job. Well, yeah. I guess we'll know in four years, and those, these young young players will be more experienced. But there's a British and Irish Lions tour in between there as well. Yeah. But you know, like I mean, look these these Polynesian nations in rugby. They, they, mate, England just got past Samoa by a point. So you know they, they're starting to get Catching better. So you got, yeah, they, you got to give them. You know, you got to give them some respect. I agree. Or oh, Fiji getting the win over Australia that was kind of the turning point for Australia's campaign. But I will say that you know you're right. They probably need to go and just have a rugby league hit list. And start ticking off some quality talent. But let's go to NFL Week 6, okay? The NFL season's on. The NBA season's around the corner. Kicks off in two weeks. That got me thinking. NBA or NFL? Which is the more popular sport in Australia? In Australia, it's a tough one. I feel like the NFL is picking up some steam. But it's just nowhere near the popularity of the NBA at the moment. NBA is the most popular, I think, sport outside of Australia. But maybe, I think it contends with soccer as in the most popular sport well, in Australia. I think it's more popular in Australia. More people play basketball in Australia. I mean, people tune in to the NBA more than they do the NFL in just terms of TV ratings here in Australia. What's seen on ESPN. Even you look at the times that they're on. The NFL's on early morning here in Australia. You've got to get up, watch Red Zone. You know, whereas the NBA when it's on... It's on during the day, 10, 11 a.m. It's, it's, it's easily nice accessible to game. watch. You could probably watch it at work, get it up online. It, it's, it's more accessible to, to Aussies. If you just look at metrics of where I think popularity would be mm. tested, betting volumes. I think if you look at betting volumes across sports betting platforms, everyone has an NBA multi Yeah, but there's way more NBA games throughout the season. There's 82 regular season but games. regardless... And the NFL plays 17, 17 rounds. Regardless, I'm just saying, when you turn 18... Everyone has an NBA multi on. That's when people start getting into the NBA. Yeah, yeah. Our brother's a case, a perfect case Gabriel, for that. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 everyone wants to put an NBA multi on. NFL doesn't really have that kind of popularity. And that's where you draw a lot of attention. Would you say that NBA is easier to understand than NFL, the rules? Definitely. I mean, what, ball goes into basket, five people on the court. NFL, there's way too many rules. They're throwing flags everywhere. Coaches throwing a flag, refs throwing a flag. No one really understands what's going on. Exactly. I, I, I'm an NFL fan. I barely know what's going on half the time. They call a penalty for something. It's mm. like rugby union. If you there's don't know holding, the sport, there's face yeah. masks, there's offside. Yeah, but, yeah, it's yeah. probably a bit too complex. If you don't know the sport, you're not going to really follow it or okay. you know, enjoy it as much. What about social media following? Social media following. NBA Australia has 77,000 followers. NFL Australia, only 40,000 followers. So there's a 37,000 discrepancy there. That's just there. their Aussie pages. That's just their Aussie pages. Overall? International. NBA, 83 million followers. NFL, 28 million. And you could say 28 million is all from the US. NFL's only big in America, and that's just the way yeah. it is. NBA is an international sport and more popular in Australia. They're trying to expand the NFL into London, into Germany. They're playing games over there now. But ultimately, it's also player marketability. You know who LeBron James is. You know who the star players are of each organization in the NBA. Russell Westbrook, Kevin Durant. In the NFL... You know maybe two or three star players. Everyone knows your Tom Brady's and your Patrick Mahomes, superstars in the Super Bowls, but they're 53-man rosters. You don't know everyone on any given roster. No, nah, and you look at this as well. In Australia specifically, everyone wears an NBA jersey. NBA mm. jerseys, go. everyone's wearing one. I think I'm one of five people in Australia that wears an NFL jersey. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. just a harsh reality. NFL is popular in America. It's not that popular in Australia, it's, but it's catching look, on. I, I think NFL's wasting their money, you know, sending games to, to London. Just like Australia's... The, the, they the pack rugby, it out, though. The NRL's wasting money send, you know, sending games to LA. To Vegas. To Vegas. Yeah, it's only yeah. to Vegas. You know, it's a waste of money. They're you both know, like, expanding, but like I said, more people play basketball here. It's slowly gaining more popularity. The NBL is taking off here in Australia as well, slowly growing in popularity. Whereas we're just getting onto flag football here you know, in Australia. There's no gridiron teams. You maybe go find a niche university that might have a gridiron team. 
but it's really just it's really just flag football, which is like Oz tag for gridiron. So if you're asking NBA versus NFL, who wins? NBA. I wins. think NBA is the more popular sport here in Australia. For but sure. speaking of the NFL, yeah. we want to start doing this each week now. Our top five NFL teams, according to the Kangaroos brothers. Yeah, the power rankings of the NFL. This is week six. Last week we gave out our week five power rankings. We did it with NFL Australia. We got rinsed in the comments for a little, uh, some of them because we had Philadelphia Eagles first. One of the main reasons for that, we're riding our boy Jordan Maillard, fly Eagles fly, but they're also undefeated. And at that point in time, I think they'd gone up against some top, tougher oppositions than the 49ers did, for yeah. sure. 49ers had an easier schedule, but looking at our top five, at number five, mm. we've put the Miami Dolphins, the best offense in the NFL, absolutely demolished the New York Giants on the weekend. Bar the loss to Buffalo, they should be top three. They've got a great offense. They've got the best wide receivers in the NFL. And if you're a team versing them, you're probably going to leak some points to them. That's just the reality. Yeah, if Tua stays healthy, that should be sweet. But at number four, I'm keeping the Buffalo Bills. Even though they've lost two games and they lost on the weekend to Jacksonville, we're not overreacting. Okay, they, they beat Miami, so they have to be above them in the power rankings. And at full strength, Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills are the best team in the NFL. I think they're Super Bowl favorites, and Josh Allen's probably my MVP pick as well. Number three, going Kansas City Chiefs. Yes, everyone is distracted by Taylor Swift and the Swifties. They keep cutting to her every time there's a touchdown being scored. Travis Kelsey coming off a little bit of an injury in this recent game, but at the end of the day, they are one of the most consistent offenses in the NFL. They're scoring touchdowns left, right, and center. Pat Mahomes is paying consistently. That's why they're number three. Well, Pat Mahomes, I think, is up there as MVP favorite, mm -hmm. and that's just because he's the best player in the NFL. When you have the best player in the NFL, you're going to be a top five power ranked team. Number two. Number two, we're going with our Philadelphia Eagles. They're unstoppable. They off Offensively, they've got the best offensive line. Jo Jalen Hurts is playing off the back of them. They've got that illegal tush-push play. It's not illegal, but everyone's complaining about it. And we had them at number one, but they had a closer game than I would have liked against LA on the weekend. Out coming off a very close game the previous week so, as well in an overtime win. But as long as they're undefeated, they'll remain top two with a chance to go top one, depending on how results go. And number one? San Francisco 49ers, we've surrendered the number one spot to them. They demolished the Dallas Cowboys. It happens every year, 49ers pump the Cowboys, but it's just the way they did it. They've got the best receivers, Debo Samuel, Brendan Ayuk. They've got George Kittle. Christian McCaffrey is the best player in the uh, NFL at the moment. He's probably MVP for a running back. It'll probably be the first time since 2012. Brock Purdy's signed for over 250 yards a game. The guy's killing it. They are the most rounded team in the NFL right now. Yeah, and if... You gotta say, if any team was to verse them, they'd be the betting favourites, so that's why they're number one. That's our top five in the NFL this week. Going into week seven and starting to heat up. Smokey that we had in our top ten last week, that's very disappointing. Coming off the loss to San Fran. Dak Prescott and the Cowboys. Yeah. Shocking. Shocking. Shocking loss. I think that was the this the end of week five now. So that's the end of week five? Yeah, so we're going into week six. We're going now. into week six. My apologies. Yeah. You've missed a week. Yeah, top You've that, added a week. That, let's go into our usual top five each week. We do our top fives. Uh, you can check us out on the JBK Show over on YouTube and take to, stay tuned to our top fives on at PickleBet on Instagram. This week's top five is top five rugby league boxers. Starting with number five, Big Nelson Asafa Solomon. And now look, he doesn't have a lot on his boxing resume right now, but the guy is a mountain six foot plus tall. You saw what he did to Jared Wallace over the weekend. And plus... He's got some past experience. We've seen him in Indonesia throwing around these Bali. little Balinese people, you know, <laughs> throwing haymakers. You have that. Show that to any, any person. This guy's a man mountain. He's unstoppable. He's going to have more fights, I imagine, in the future. He's made to be in the boxing ring. I wouldn't want to go up against him. Credit to Jared Wallace for doing that. But that's why, Jar uh, sorry, Nas is number five. Just based off the Bali footage alone, he's top five. But 100%. at number four, we're going with John Hoppawati, mm -hmm. a former Australian heavyweight champion. He lost, he lost four fights towards the end of his career, but we're not going to really look at that because he was old. I think he had one fight against Paul Gallen. Well, 19 fights, 12 wins, and 11 by KO. 11 by KO. The guy's got some punching power. Not a bad resume for John Hoppawati. And you look at his aggression on field. If he probably had a full-time boxing career and used that aggression towards boxing, he might have been one of the greatest Australian boxers of all time. That's just being unbiased. Number three, we're going with Sonny Bill Williams. Again, jumping ship from rugby league to boxing. He's done it all. He's the ultimate athlete. Let's give credit to where credit's due. But the asterisks on his career is some say he's avoided Paul Gallon throughout his career. That's a money fight that never really happened. Also, he set up his fights quite well. He also lost his last fight to Mark Hunt, which no one gave Mark Hunt a chance as well. So again, credit to where credit's due for Sonny Bill Williams, but 
I, I, don't, I think he's so, quite a little bit overrated in Australian boxing. Sonny Bill had that fight against Francis Botha. Mm. And it was supposed to go 12 rounds, and it looked like he was losing. They stopped it at 10 rounds. They just called it at yeah, 10. Yeah, they called they it at 10. Said, Hang on, what, what did they sanction it as? Sonny <laughs> Bill Williams is overrated. He's not a great boxer. He chooses his fighters. There's one fight, I'm pretty sure he versed someone that just looked like they just got off the couch. They had fat rolling off their sides. Mm. He's not a boxer. He's picked his fights, and he's been running from Paul Gallen since he's retired from rugby league. So there's no way he could be above Paul In Gallen. saying that, I wouldn't fight him. We love it, Sonny. But at number two, Paul Gallen. Arguably the greatest Australian boxer of all time. If you look at a uh, rugby league boxer of all time. Rugby league boxer. Finishing his career at the Sharks, then transitioning to boxing after that in that late age and being able to put on, you know, some of the most hyped fights in boxing in Australia. He fought Justice Hooney and held on all the way to the very end. Took punches. And every opponent that he's versed, he looks like he's a seasoned boxer. I think as a genuine boxer, he does well. And in comparison to all the rugby league uh, boxers, He's a, he's a head, head and shoulders above them. He was one of the main draws for No Limit for how many yeah. years. Really put Australian boxing on the map, carried cards. Credit to Paul Gallen. He's, I know he's retired from boxing. I'm sure he'll get there if the money is right again. He always no one, says that. No one really retires. But again, everyone wanted to see him knocked out. And to his credit, went up against some solid professionals and still held his own in boxing. Yeah. No, it's, I mean, like Gallen, I reckon if he took up boxing earlier, yeah, he could have been one of, one of, the, one of the best boxers. He's got good form. Yeah. He would have been probably number one if it wasn't for who is number one, Anthony Chock Mundane. Now, this bloke was the original, you know, the OG of from rugby league to boxing. He's the blueprint for rugby league players to venture into boxing. He could talk the talk, but he walked the walk. He's an ultimate athlete, said he was the best and proved it. He versed some really tough opponents, had the long-standing rivalry with Danny Green. Again, probably fizzled off towards the end of his career, but he had... Probably the best Australian boxing career. Was one of the main attractions in Australian boxing for at least a decade. Carried, carried Australian boxing on his back. And that's why the man's the best. He is the greatest Australian boxer of all time. Mm. I, do, I would say no other person's been a bigger draw than Anthony Mundine. And that's because he came from rugby league. But he talks the talk and walks the walk. And if you think anyone that tries to transition from rugby league to boxing, they're trying to do the Anthony Mundine. The one thing that sets Mundine apart is he could sell his fights. Whether you wanted to see him get knocked out or whether you wanted to get behind him. Even though he was a former rugby league player, he had the ability to put asses in seats. He was a draw, and that's what uh, not a lot of people can do in Australian boxing. One more fight in him? Uh, I don't think so. No, I think he's done. I think he's getting more into the political activism, which is a great route to go down. But, you know. Just, just as much fighting. Just as much, yeah. Just verbal fighting. But that's our top five for the week. That is Nelson Asafa Solomona, John Hopawadi, Sonny Bill Williams, Paul Gallen. And Anthony Mundine, make sure you subscribe to at the JBK Show to view our top five. But let's go into some international sports. We stayed up for the Arsenal Man City game, 2.30 in the morning. Before that was the Liverpool loss. Sorry about your multi. But again, the EPL is heating up. Some upsets over the weekend. What was the standout? Well, Man City, back-to-back -back losses now, but losing to Arsenal, who is a team last year that they had beaten twice. And that mm. was what decided the championship. Wasn't a goal until the 86th minute. Martinelli putting one in behind the net. Like watching the game, again, those games, those tight games can be very boring all the way up until bang, goal. Do you think Man City back-to-back -back losses should start panicking? No. It's just the, the biggest problem is the internet going at Erling Haaland saying he goes missing in big games. Mm. He hasn't scored a goal now in two consecutive games. But just relax, guys. They're still the champions of Europe. They've just won the treble. They had a slow start towards the uh, start of last year. Don't overreact. But in other games, another late winner from Man United. Mm. They were down 1-0. Then all of a sudden, they substitute McTominay on. He kicks two goals in six minutes, gets man of the match. That's just soccer for you, And know? still, all that anyone talking about right now in the APL is Tottenham. They're top of the table. Yeah. They somehow keep winning. I don't know how they keep doing it. But Postacoglu, Ange Ball's Ange running Ball. wild. And it's just the irony now that they're top of the table. Harry Kane's not on the team. And if they do win a trophy without Harry Kane, is that just the ultimate irony Well, the commentary the for fans in the APL is that they had managers at Tottenham. Some world-class managers, Jose Mourinho, that couldn't do what Postacoglu was doing. What is it about some A-League manager that can go in there and put Tottenham at the top of the table? I mean, they're seven games in. Like everyone, oh, eight games in. It everyone doesn't matter. It, it, I, I'm saying they're, they're playing good football and at the top of the table in a Premier League, in a very competitive Premier League. And they've played the likes of Arsenal as well. So he's doing something right. Uh, you've got to start giving him credit. Well, and they, they are, they're starting to do that in England. Well, they've drew with Arsenal and they beat Liverpool. So they haven't lost the game. They haven't lost the game yeah. yet as well. They're undefeated in the Premier League. They lost a, a Championship League game for mm. one of the smaller trophies, but no one really cares about that. 
But I'm saying they're going to drop off, so everyone just relax. And in the upcoming week of sport, we've got Tim Zhu versus, uh, after coming off the win against Acampo, he's got Brian Mendoza this Sunday in the Gold Coast. Should heat up. I don't think it's going to do crazy amount of pay-per-view buys. They're kind of getting him ready for a fight against Charlo and then potentially a Canelo Alvarez fight. It's his last warm-up before going to Vegas. This will be his ultimate last fight in Australia. He is officially the WBO champion in his weight division right now. Everyone's looking forward to, I mean, no limit of getting behind him going to Vegas. They might line up a fight after this fight in line with the NRL being in Vegas. So, again, everyone's getting behind Tim Zhu this weekend. You've got to get behind your Aussie. I'm going to predict he gets it done pretty early as well. I, I think, I mean, Mendoza's going into this as an underdog. I think pretty similar to last, it's done, it's done within four rounds. I mean, I, I only know Tim Zhu for finishing it early, so I don't imagine it's going to go longer than that. And then in saying that, not that it's real boxing, but you've got the, Dan, the zone card... The prime card, Logan Paul versus Dylan Dennis and KSI versus Tommy Fury. This finally comes to a head after there's been lawsuits, after there's been leaked nudes online of Logan Paul's missus, after we've seen her be with 53 plus other men on Twitter. It finally comes to a head. What's your prediction for Dylan Dennis versus Logan Paul? I'm predicting Logan Paul wins the boxing match, but it doesn't matter who wins the fight because Logan Paul's the ultimate loser. He's lost so much from this feud, from this fight. Mm. And if you look at this, Logan Paul... He's regretting accepting a fight to Dylan Dennis. I'm not going to say that, you know, it's rigged. I'm not going to say it's rigged, but ultimately, like you said, the ultimate loser from this is Logan Paul. I think Dylan Dennis, who's a jiu-jitsu guy, is going to come out a winner regardless if he gets a win or not. Gets paid. Yeah. I think it probably goes a distance. Logan Paul gets the win with the judges. But at the end of the day, Dylan Dennis has put himself on the map even further. His social following's grown immensely. And I, I think... You know, Logan Paul will finally turn his comments back on on Twitter. Because, and that, that's how you know who's really won the fight. But this fight overshadows the main event. It's not even the main event. KSI versus Tommy Fury is the main event. Who you got in that one? I can't get behind KSI. I feel like even in the build-up, he's too cringe. He's unfunny. And he, he drums up his boxing skills like he's fucking Floyd Mayweather or something. You, if Jake Paul couldn't beat Tommy Fury, I don't see KSI beating Tommy Fury. Tommy Fury is probably a class above these guys. I think he loses this fight and sets up the Jake Paul fight. I'm not even a big fan of Tommy Fury, but I hate KSI that much from mm. the build-up. And you know, I want Arsenal Tommy fan. Fury to win. And I'm an Arsenal fan. Mm. I, you know, we should be buddies with KSI. But is that annoying and that cringe? I want him to get knocked out. Yeah, I, I think... A lot of people below the age of 16 will be rooting for KSI. Every other adult is probably going for Tommy Fury and the Furies because they're far more entertaining. And I'm just getting behind the dad. I'm getting behind John Fury. He's a character. Yeah, he's a character. But that, that's a wrap for us today at Primetime. Make sure you're subscribing to at the JBK Show and following along on our socials at PickleBet. But that's all from us in the studio. But before, before we, we wrap, go, one last thing. Everest tips. Oh, the Everest is on is this, this Saturday. O October 14th. Yes. Everest. Dad, who's the best bet of the week in the Everest? Um, I'm going to, look, Gay, Waters, Gay Waterhouse is having an absolute mm. wonderful spring campaign. I think Hawaii 5-0 um, might, might be able to come, come over the top of them and win. My roughie, Espiona, Chris Espiona? Waller. Espiona? What's it yeah. paying at the moment? It's paying about $17. Oh, that's good value. That yeah. is great value. I'm going to back Private Eye just because I've backed Mate, second up is no good. But I like backing yeah. people that I've backed before. I'm a loyal guy. And if it gets it done, you'll see them the regularly throughout money. spring. Hopefully, you just keep backing them until you get a winner. And exactly. And I'll be hoping to get some bonus bets this weekend. And it's all going on private eye. Okay, so there you have it. Richard's bet, best bet for the Everest. He's back in Gay Waterhouse. And what's your Ruffy? Ruffy, Espiona, Chris Waller. Okay. So we got Hawaii 5 0. Hawaii, Hawaii 5 0 and Espiona or private eye. Used okay. to be a great TV series, Hawaii 5 0. <laughs> yeah, they tried to revive it. <laughs> that didn't, didn't work. Didn't no. work out that well. <laughs> no. uh, that, that's, that's a wrap for us on Primetime today. Make sure you're subscribing. And that's all from us. Back to you in the studio, George.